a little over a year after OpenAI released their cutting-edge GPT-4 large language model, we now have an open-source variant that beats GPT-4. And, oh yeah, by the way, it's about 10 times smaller. And of course, that means it's way cheaper to run and way more efficient. And being open, well, anyone can modify it. Anyone can add on to it. Anyone can use it for any use case. No single entity controls it. Matt Schumer, which is a fantastic AI account, I recommend you follow, by the way, brought this to my attention. Of course, if we check out the actual post at hand, we can see it's known as Wizard LM2, their next generation state-of-the-art large language model. It comes in three different sizes. We have the full, big Wizard LM2 8x22B. Not exactly a small model, but will still be a lot cheaper to run than something like GPT-4. A 70B model, which still not super small, but definitely getting into the range of a startup could absolutely run something like this on their own GPUs and 7B which absolutely could be run at your home on your computer. Anyways, highly competitive performance in comparison to leading proprietary large language models. We get a nice little breakdown here. We can see that the smallest 7B model actually beats Claude 2 which is quite impressive among a few other sprinkled models in there. And then we move over to the 70B model which beats Mid Mistral Large, which Mistral, if you don't know, is sort of a famous name in the open source large language model community. They usually kick butt, but Wizard LM has them here, and Claude 2.1 also gets beat by that 70B model. Moving now over to the 8x22B model, of course, we see finally GPT-4 gets beaten by a decent amount, a 9.12 over an 8.96. Still benches right under Claude 3 Sonnet, which is a brand new medium medium-sized model from Anthropic, not that old at all, still can't beat that GPT-4-1106 preview though, so this is an updated version of GPT-4, you could call it a GPT-4.5, and then of course reigning at the top is Claude 3 Opus, and honestly, the bench really isn't too far off from Claude 3 Opus, this fits right in there with the top performing models, absolutely mind-blowing, OpenAI, where is GPT-5? As Stefan points out, the wizards really be cooking. For those of you looking to download weights right now, they have had to remove everything temporarily because they accidentally missed a portion of testing, but fairly soon we're going to see this back up. So it's not like it's going anywhere. How does this fit as a puzzle piece into the rest of the large language model and AI sector? Being open source and as good as GPT-4 is a pretty powerful thing. Like I said, anyone can fine tune their own data on this or use it for any purposes, both good and bad and my stance on open source has remained fairly consistent. I think it is dangerous, yes, of course it is, but AI is dangerous regardless, and I think it's less dangerous than one single corporate entity controlling the most powerful large language models or AI on the planet. You might disagree with me, and that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. One thing absolutely is for sure that quality AI models like GPT-4 and beyond are getting cheaper and cheaper as this race to zero, not only from corporations, but also open source developers, ties everything in. AI is going to be everywhere, in your phone, in your fridge, in your car. It is going to be cheap and accessible within the next 10 years on that scale. Exciting and a little bit daunting. Either way, I can't wait to see what people build and come up with utilizing powerful open source models like this. And speaking of, Taskade is releasing their multi-AI agents that are now entering into beta. Imagine one AI agent researching while another converts insights into tasks. They can write articles, perform research, summarize findings, and edit content all at once. Still in early access, we can't use it yet. This ties directly into what I was just saying about open source large language models. They could be applied to tasks like this and make AI agents a lot cheaper and more efficient. Because as you know, these multi-AI agents have to work together and do a lot of token generation. So something that is good, fast, and cheap is absolutely necessary for a use case like this. Now, Taskade here is definitely not first to the party when it comes to multi-AI agents and of of course, we don't have access to it yet, so I can't tell you if it's better than the examples I've already tried from other startups. But I gotta say, this demo is pretty intriguing. We start 
the first agent off here and we start our second agent here to write this one researches keywords and volume and then the final one takes everything that these three agents produced and combines it into one and this is the designer agent and I know this might seem super exciting but I've already seen a AI that can do this relatively speaking and work together autonomously on that i mean it was far from perfect but again this is not released yet so we don't know if it's going to be competitive or way better for example oh and by the way if you're wondering about that ai agent i used in the past it was called the lindy and i'll go ahead and link it down below for you guys but yeah you can have agents that work together different llms accessing different APIs, all kinds of stuff. It gets pretty deep. I haven't made a video on it or a full video on it at least because I haven't got it to work in the way that I want to. It still seems to be very early access-esque where the agents aren't communicating necessarily all the time as they should, etc, etc. But again, if you guys want to check it out, this is a similar concept, I would say. Oh, by the way, guys, I forgot to mention this about Wizard LM2. They actually go through the entire process of of how they made and trained this large language model so yeah they're really giving back to the community with this one simplifying everything and um, bringing it to fruition this allows other open source developers to get a better understanding of how to maybe build their own large language models or fine-tune wizard lm really really happy to see stuff like this it's great for the community in other news of course OpenAI has a little something that they have dropped as of lately and it is this new dynamic mode inside of chat gpt Andrew Caron says a new model just went live, but I wouldn't really say it's a new model. I believe this is just toggling between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, depending on how difficult your task is. And as Andrew points out, you also have the ability to swap models mid thread now. Honestly, in my opinion, more or less, these are just nice to have use cases but i'll be honest almost anything that i come to chat gpt4 now at this point is using chat gpt4 i never really have anything where i'm like oh shoot you know what i need that gpt 3.5 model i get it dynamic might save open ai costs but anything that can be done by 3.5 can be done by a lot of other models at this point ones that honestly might even be more accessible than the chat gpt website i do like the fact that i can switch back to 3.5 though at any point in time and finally this might be the coolest thing that i saw recently spline announces a new ai 3d generation tool text to 3d image to 3d remix editor and integration into spline which is already a platform for 3d creation but yeah i mean right off the bat this looks pretty dang good to avoid copyrighted music i'm just going to jump through this but you can see you type in purple octopus cartoonish stylized and there you go you get a purple octopus and it looks pretty dang good still far from perfect you can definitely see in the eyes it's a little bit mushy and like some weirdness is going up on the octopus's face but like it absolutely could be worse look at this person's face then we have a tree the trees honestly don't look too bad because they're kind of messy anyways i guess here we have another face but man that's kind of incredible how it's able to extrapolate this just from an image because i believe that's how their model is working under the hood we've got some dogs here that's pretty cute that's not too bad at all i think if these assets are small enough in whatever 3d world you're using it might not really be too much of an issue we got some teddy bears this one looks really dang good not a bad spaceman it's definitely the best 3d model that i've ever seen and there you go you can see some funky trees as well we've got stuff that's going on that's maybe a little bit not so established in the database that they trained this thing on chimpanzee head that's quite impressive as well got the ears and everything i mean they still very much look like they're made of clay and all mushy but yeah when you see it come together like this I gotta say, that's impressive. Like, we got this little cheeseburger. Like, that could be an asset in, you know, some kind of, like, a mobile game or anything, and no one would really bat an eye, I think. Definitely has its use cases. And, yeah, by the way, this is actually available now. I will make a note about this, though. Um, I did go to the website, and it's a $30 subscription to get access to this. So, I will test it if you guys want me to, but... 
in the past, I've noticed that there isn't too much excitement, at least on your end, for the 3D generation stuff, and that's why I kind of don't talk about it too much. I think as it gets better, people will get much more excited about it, so let me know if this is something that you want me to cover a little bit more in depth, because I absolutely will, you know, grab that subscription and give it a nice test round, and maybe even do a live stream where you guys can make suggestions. Been maybe a little bit more on the slow end lately, I would say, but still definitely some interesting things that are worth talking about. Again, if at any point in this video you find a topic that really perks your interest, just let me know down in the comments below if you'd like a full deeper dive video. That's how I like to approach these news style update videos. If something is particularly interesting, let me know. Oh, actually, I do have one more piece of news that I would like to bring to the table. Yesterday, I posted this fun tweet, where is Stable Diffusion 3? Because if you remember quite some time ago, Stability AI said that Stable Diffusion 3 was right around the corner. They made a whole announcement about it and then radio silence. Apparently, some people have gotten access, but I was told I was going to get access in like a few days and then that just never happened. So it's been quite some time and I'm like missing, where is Stable Diffusion 3? Thankfully, we did get a reply from Lycan here saying I'm here with some stable diffusion 3 results so it appears that they still do plan on releasing it but maybe things aren't quite finished up yet I'm not sure exactly what's going on some have noted that they're a little bit worried especially now that Emad has stepped down as CEO of stability AI that it's going to be behind a paywall and not open source which would be a huge bummer and if it would turn out that this model is private and not open source I honestly don't think that it would be that valuable to the community especially with things like Ideogram AI and, of course, Dolly 3 already floating around, even if there is some better coherency from Stable Diffusion 3, I don't think it's that much of a game changer in order for it to be worth not being open source. I mean, that's that's the whole value, isn't it? Anyways, forgot to talk about that. Thank you so much for diving in with me today and exploring some of the latest in AI. Check out the channel for some more videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and check out my Discord server as well. I keep forgetting to mention that. We have a fantastic Discord community that's linked down in the description below. See you in the next one.